another miracle sitting to my right, just like a a marvelous human being who was basically told by a judge, um, by an African-American judge, that you don't matter, you don't count, and I'm going to throw your life away. Here's Sheldon. Sheldon, how long have you been out for? Um, going on nine months. I got out uh, May 4th. And you were in for 25? 25 years and five months. <sighs> Four to six weeks later. 48-year-old Sheldon Johnson of Harlem is charged with murder and concealment of a human corpse. This is Johnson recently on Joe Rogan's podcast, talking about how he had turned his life around after a life of crime. Do you know what recidivism is, Randy? I don't have a clue, Mr. Lady. That's when people go back to jail over and over and over. I think we got a couple of A1 class act recidivists up there. What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering. I hope you're having an absolutely wonderful day. Here's an interesting topic from the Joe Rogan sphere. One of Joe Rogan's most hated guests in a long time, one of the ones that got perhaps the most backlash I've seen in a while, is making headlines less than a month after appearing on the show. Why, you might be asking, why would Sheldon Johnson, 48 years old, who was... uh just given a un unfair sentence and went on Joe Rogan to talk about how he was a good boy, he didn't do anything wrong. You may be wondering, did he get some sort of award? Did he save some kittens from a burning building? Did he perhaps endorse Joe Biden? No, actually, the headline is that he had a head in the fridge and he's back in jail. I'm not kidding. This guest, one of the perhaps most hated in, in, in Joe Rogan. I'm sure there have been more. <clears throat> I mean, re most recently. Sentenced to 50 years, Sheldon Johnson decided to turn his life around. And then the entire bit is the guy talking about, you know, how he was wrongfully in accused and blah, 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 blah. The show got a bunch of dislikes. And a lot of the comments say, this guy should still be in prison. Um, you know, uh, I spent nine years incarcerated. I spent that time trying to course wreck because I knew I was wrong. Screw this guy, pity party at 710. He just called me a menace to society and gave me 50 years. Their judge was right. Sheldon Johnson is apparently a menace to society. That was just a few hours ago. Bro turned his life around exactly 360 degrees. I mean, but again, people at the time hated this guy. 2.1 thousand upvotes. People want to brag about how tough they are. You know what's tough? Doing the right thing, taking care of your family, telling the truth, going to work every day, keeping your anger under control, being faithful to your wife. That's toughness. That's being a man. You know, it's, it's funny. This guy seems really smart and on the right path of life. I hope he's never found with a dismembered corpse in his refrigerator. <laughs> you know, you see, he left out the part where he ended a guy when he was 14, an innocent person just walking home from school who had nothing to do with his quote-unquote street rules. So it's, it turns out the guy was always a piece of crap. Um, they brought him, they trotted him out there like he was you know, on reform. Just wait, the story gets crazy. The last comment that I thought was funny. This man is the stereotypical inmate mentality. His capacity for rationalizing and downplaying is impressive. He puts buzzwords in to make it sound like he's taking responsibility while he's actually conveying how he believes he was unjustly charged, convicted, and disproportionately sentenced by putting himself up, by pulling himself up from the mire against all odds. Wow, what a hero. These are all a month ago. That was then. This is now. Ex Con, who is friends with woke district attorney Alvin Bragg and appeared on Joe Rogan's show last month, is arrested after a head was found in his refrigerator pictured arriving to apartment with a blue bin and in multiple disguises. Does that sound like your run of the mill, innocent guy who didn't do nothing wrong? An ex con who is friends with the woke district attorney, Alvin Bragg and appeared on Joe Rogan's podcast last month has been charged after a severed head was found at the Bronx apartment, justice reform advocate Sheldon Johnson, 48, told Popular Joe Rogan Experience podcast on February 1st 
about his journey to changing his life around after being jailed for 50 years after two terrible crimes. You know, two terrible crimes that he committed willingly and should still be in prison. He ended somebody's life. He regaled Rogan's audience with tales of his rise to the top of one of prison's most notorious gangs before insisting it was all behind him. I've been doing bad for so long, I'm going to try to do something good, he said. If all else fails, I can go back and do something bad, he said at the time. Just one month after the episode, Johnson was charged in relation to a dismembered body found in a bin and a head stashed in a freezer belonging to Colin Small, someone he apparently had a beef with in prison. Johnson, who works with at-risk youth at the Queen's Defenders in New York, joined Rogan to discuss his justice reform advocacy. During the chat, he admitted to dealing drugs and robbing people who could not settle their debts, acts for which he judge, which a judge reportedly branded him a menace to society. You know, if he was still in prison, this other guy would still be alive. I just want to point that out. He described robbing a debtor and his girlfriend in the 90s with the help of a gang of accomplices whom one of them pistol whipped the victim, leaving him with a head wound. Johnson also admitted he roughed up a secondary robbery victim, although he insisted the man was not physically harmed, although he was given consecutive 25-year sentences for his crimes. <laughs> Everybody's innocent in prison. This is obviously not Joe Rogan's fault, um, but it is a perfect encapsulation of kind of like woke nonsense, woke... Um, judges, woke district attorneys, the real people that suffer. Now, I don't know what the specifics of how this guy's head got removed, but what's even more hilarious is while in prison, the felon said he was doing all sorts of bad stuff. He claims he had all, you know, he was all hard and he was doing solitary, blah, 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 blah. Well, this is him wearing a blonde wig going to, uh, Take this person's body parts out in bags. All caught on security camera wearing multiple disguises. Bad disguises. Johnson said he was, it was thinking about his wife and son growing up hearing stories of his notoriety that spurred him on even further to do more good. When I got out of solitary, I made the decision that I was going to walk away and didn't care about the consequences. He added that the gang was happy for him to take a step back because he caused problems for them due to strict adherence to street rules. I was what you would call an authoritarian. I was a rule guy. I like rules. I like structure. Again, here he is after somebody found a head. You can see before the grisly discovery, Johnson was spotted in chilling surveillance images appearing to disguise himself in a blonde wig and transporting large boxes and trash bags. He's now, of course, been charged. With everything, police descended up on the apartment Tuesday following reports from a concerned neighbor over hearing a pew pew go off. They reportedly told PD making the wellness check that they subsequently saw a stranger coming and going from the apartment with cleaning supplies. Fears were also sparked by the uh, hearing the victim saying, please don't. I have a family. Didn't care. Didn't care about the guy's family. And, and you know, ultimately, Alvin Bragg, this, you know, blood is on his channel. Or blood, this blood is on his hands. Sorry, not his channel. The building superintendent told the Post, he told officers that he became concerned by the stranger's presence, particularly as they were not a tenant. He claimed that the suspect carried a blue bin seen in surveillance footage into the apartment around 2 a.m. after the incident was heard, but was not seen bringing it back. He brought in the bin, I told him. Why is he bringing in the bin at 2 in the morning? He's bringing in a bin so late, the super said. You can see all the items here. We tried to see if he took out the bin. He never took out the bin. I told him, look for a bin. And sure enough, it was there. In a strange development, the building super also claimed he saw the suspect leaving the scene in the victim's blue Audi before returning wearing a blonde wig. They felt he was trying to disguise himself, saying he was dressing differently, changing his character. That's not normal. He's hiding something. Of course, the justice reform activist has opened up been open about his criminal past. This is the, the problem. The, 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 the problem with this, of course, delete this episode, haunting twist, delete this episode, rage, Joe Rogan fans, uh, 
as podcast host Sheldon Johnson arrested uh, after finding body parts. I mean, think of your mindset if you're doing that kind of thing, right? He was never an activist. He was never reformed. A lot of red flags were going off in my head when I listened to this episode. One person wrote on Reddit where the users were discussing the arrest. Johnson's lawyer, Josh Dubbin, called him his client a miracle, adding that he was unfairly sentenced to do decades for robbery that left his, uh, apparently, the person with only two stitches. I didn't like this guess at all. Fans rushed to the episode on YouTube to share their shock with hundreds of comments pouring in after the arrest. Here we are one month later. He's arrested for murder. One viewer wrote, delete this episode. Another person urged. Yeah, I mean, I would argue that, yeah, probably. I mean, I guess I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't personally care if he deletes it or not. I think, I guess you leave it on, you know, killer in a wig accused of, you know, do, I mean, again, this is what woke, um, kind of woke district attorneys, woke policies, soft on crime. This is what it happens. Now, I'm not saying that people can't be reformed, and I'm not saying that everybody needs to be locked up for life or that people don't deserve a second chance. Um, but what I am saying is when you have extraordinarily soft on crime uh, laws, you have a district attorney that is parading this guy around like he's, you know, the, the, he's literally the perfect encapsulation of New York crime. You know? His family's three generations of criminals were profiled in 2016, including his father's conviction for uh, doing something terrible to his seven-year-old daughter. I mean, are you kidding me? I don't know how he got on Joe Rogan's podcast. I don't know how in the heck, uh, you know, the district attorney thought that this guy was fit for release. It, the whole thing is a disaster. And the people who suffer the most at these woke policies are innocent civilians, innocent bystanders. How many more people have to lose their lives so that a woke district attorney can talk about, um, you know, progressive policies? It's absolutely absurd. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do leave a like on it and we'll talk to you again real soon.